Welcome to Mafia, a new podcast telling stories of America's criminal underworld. Gotti assumed the position of head of the Gambino family. And using the name Donnie Brasco, I was able to infiltrate the uh, Bonanno uh, crime family in New York City. Bugsy Siegel is an American mob legend. One man changed the whole texture and landscape of crime in America. Listen to Mafia every Wednesday on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. New York Culture with real New Yorkers. Joan Hamburg, 77 WABC, where New York comes to talk. I'm looking forward to all of you guys meeting David Friedman. And probably there's no better time than I can remember for you to hear David and find out what he's all about. He's a wonderful songwriter, and he writes songs that deal with us in a very deep emotional way and songs that we need. And he's written them for everyone. In fact, there's a Nancy Lamott CD that I'm going to tell you how you can get in just a minute. But David has written songs for musicals on Broadway, for Disney, including Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. And it just goes on and on. He has other musicals right now that are in the works. He does a song a month for the Today Show. You know how Hoda and Kathy Lee have a segment, Everyone Has a Story. He's written books, and he wrote a book that, as a nation, we all need at this moment. We can be kind, healing our world, one kindness at a time. So welcome to you, David. Hi, John. It's great to be here. I think it's been about, I think the last time we spoke was 2003 with Kathy Lee when my show Listen to My Heart opened. Uh, you know, I remember that still. That, that was really terrific. But how did you grow up to be David Friedman? Were, as a kid, were you doing this, writing songs? Were you a very sensitive kind of kid? Well, I was a very sensitive kind of kid, and I was always musical, but actually... I had a number of careers because songwriting was the most frightening thing to me because you're so revealing yourself. So I started as a music director and I conducted on Broadway and then I conducted and vocal arranged Disney movies and I sort of wrote in secret. And then my writing turned out to be, it's funny, I've, I've done so many different things that if you ask me what I do, even though I'm a musician, I would say my mission is to heal, whether it's through songs, whether it's through books, whether it's through working with people. And so this, all these different careers have come together in writing shows and in writing books. And, it, uh, and I love your introduction to the show because I am a real New Yorker. I was born here. Yeah, uh, well, and, and that's very rare. It's like someone being born in L.A., right? Yeah, right, exactly. I'm it, born in the Bronx. Yeah. It practically doesn't happen. But... Yeah. So the healing mission, and I finished We Can Be Kind reading it, your book is a really is a journey. And you not only have become the teacher, but you were the student along the way. Absolutely. Well, you know, this book came about as things often do in an odd way. I had written, uh, I, I write a lot of metaphysics books, but I had written a book to heal years and years ago from a relationship called How They Met, where I speak about how couples of long standing met. And the book was delayed uh, in its publishing, and my publisher said, you have something else. And I suddenly flashed on, I have this song that I wrote for Nancy Lamont, We Can Be Kind. And this song has been around the world, and it's been used as the theme song for the Duke Children's Hospital. It's been used to raise funds for AIDS-related causes, all sorts of things. And I looked at this song, and I thought, you know, with what's going on in the world and in our country, kindness is the thing we need the most. And so I took one line of the song is each chapter heading. And I had I did essays or stories about myself or stories I heard. And then there's a section on how we can be kind, but more important, how can we be kind to ourselves? Because in my metaphysics work, I've come to understand that really the whole world is going on inside of me in the way I experience things and in the way I look at things and in the way I, I feel sensations in my body. And there's nothing intrinsically going on in the world. You know, I, I have a saying that, uh, you know, don't you just hate it when people you can't stand have friends? Like, you know, you can really exactly. not like Exactly. Like, how does that happen? 
<laughs> and so, yeah, but someone else says, you don't like them, I love them. They're neither good nor bad. When we look at the world, we only see ourselves. So I thought kindness is not just being nice to people and, you know, and, oh, God, i got to be kind. Every time we perform a kindness, we are creating a world inside ourselves in which that kindness exist because we created it. And so I'm asking people to, rather than looking outside and saying, oh, that one's doing this and this is terrible, when you see something outside, notice what you're thinking. Notice that you think you're limited, that you think there's uh, no possibilities, and go to the possibilities inside yourself. That's why healing our world one kindness at a time, my world is the world inside of me, and everyone else's world is the world inside of them. Let's heal ourselves with kindness rather than waiting for someone else to do something. Right. And and you open up yourself and your own insecurities oh, because yeah. you know which because uh, for example when you write about the fact you ha- you were really successful and then you are riding the high of a good market. You took a mortgage, like so many of us, that was much too high in those in that mm-hmm. time. And then yeah. your world fell apart, and you were really financially in trouble. And I'm telling you, I felt your rage at the bank, which was yeah. a deserved rage, <laughs> you know, yeah. ignoring your request to deal with them, to lower the rates, to make it feasible for you to continue with owning your home. No one would respond. Well, the interesting thing about that story, why it's in the book, is you're absolutely right. And you get furious and you start calling and screaming and stuff like that. And so I was speaking to somebody who is a big uh, music business deal maker and a financial advisor. And she said to me, I said, I would like to figure out a way to pay off this mortgage at a lower, you know, they wouldn't lower my rate, but just pay it off. And so she said, I'll connect you. But... There's one piece of advice I have to give you. No matter how they yell and scream, no matter what they do to you, be delightful, be kind. The person you're talking to goes through this all day long. And I had this negotiation. Usually, you know, it's, oh, my God, they're calling. I was like, hello, how are you? And they would say things to me like, well, you absolutely have to do this. And I'd say, Right, you know, or you'll lose I everything. Would love, yeah, and I would say, you know, I would love to be able to do this. I, 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 I can't do this. What can we do? And I was just delightful. And they kept lowering that payment until I ended up paying it off and it extraordinarily low rate and everybody was happy and often it really goes to show actually real this book uh, you know because everyone's been buying it for people buying it 10 and 20 at a time I I like to say I would like to see this book in every bathroom in America right (laughs) well because as you say healing our world one kindness at a time whether you're in a car and someone passed you now that's a tough one David I was really impressed David Friedman that you just it's okay have a nice day you know Go ahead of me if you want. I thought this man is a saint. But actually, you see, what's interesting is this is the point of the book. I am not doing this for that other person. You're doing it for you. I am doing this for me. Uh, Someone passes me. They don't even know what they did. They don't even care. And I spend the next 10 minutes gripping myself and being a mess. And so, and also, I don't know what they're going through. I don't know whether, you know, maybe they're rushing to the hospital. Maybe they're, but no matter what it is, see, every time we see something in the world, we only see our reaction to it. We only see it. It's it's like the world is this big mirror and we're looking at it. I say, if you want to know what you're thinking, look at the world. So if I was standing in front of a mirror with a red shirt on and I look in the mirror and I say, I'm not wearing a red shirt. Well, I have to be wearing a red shirt. So if I'm getting all angry, it's my anger. And this person, this is hard to do, but this person's giving me the opportunity to notice how angry I am and to make a different choice. And that's the, that's the work of this. And I find when I do that, uh, choices open up to me. And so I'm trying to let people know that you are, when you're kind to other people, you're kind to yourself. You, you know, I had one story in there which in which, you know, pe- children send letters to Santa and they go to the post office that you can get a letter and fulfill it. And I really fulfilled this letter. They wanted a bear. I gave them a bear bigger than me. And as I sent it off, I realized 
this kid will never know who I am. Right, but and you felt I, so good. And I felt good not because I was so magnanimous, but because I now live in a world where I could have some dream or some problem. And somebody I never met and never thought about can solve it for me out of the blue. Why? Because I created that world. So I'm a person, other people are people. I know now that it is possible for amazing miracles to happen. And miracles have happened in my life. They happen all the time. I'm talking to David Friedman, We Can Be Kind, his new book, Healing Our World One Kindness at a Time. You're going to learn a lot of life's lessons, like how to listen and how to really love yourself and be good. And there's some wonderful stories and examples, including David's experience with his cats. He was not a cat person, but how love came into his life with fur. We'll talk about that and more. The book is available all over the place. Thank you, David. All the best to you. You too. My pleasure. I'm Joan Hamburg. We can be kind. That together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. Nobody really wants to fight. Nobody really wants to go to war. If everyone wants to make things right, then what are we always fighting for? Does nobody want to see it? Does nobody understand? The power to heal is right here in our hand. We can be can remember that deep down inside we all need the same thing and maybe we'll find if we are there for each other that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring and it's not enough to talk enough to sing a song We must walk the walk about it You and I do or die We've got to try to get along We can be kind We can take care of each other We can remember that deep We all need the same thing And maybe we'll find If we are there for each other That together we'll weather Whatever tomorrow may bring Welcome to Mafia, a new podcast telling stories of America's criminal underworld. Gotti assumed the position of head of the Gambino family. And using the name Donnie Brasco, I was able to infiltrate the uh, Bonanno uh, crime family in New York City. Bugsy Siegel is an American mob legend. One man changed the whole texture and landscape of crime in America. Listen to Mafia every Wednesday on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows.